me? There it sounds good. Uh, welcome to the second show of the night. Uh, for those that did not uh, uh, come for the first one, just a few announcements. If you are going to use the bathroom, please use the doors over there. There is a scarf in between the door that is there for a reason, so it doesn't make as much noise. So please don't take that out. Don't use the bathrooms over here. Uh, it's noisy on the on the bleachers, so please not to, try not to walk on those too much. Um, also, in the first uh, uh, show that we had, uh, there there were slides of our new building project that we're planning here. There is a meeting uh, on Sunday after the 11:30 service. It's informational about the new addition we're planning, which includes five new classrooms, some space out here to open up the gym a little bit. Uh, a new fellowship hall and a new entrance to church. Uh, so there's there's going to be an informational meeting about that on and Sunday. Air and air conditioning. Thank you, Mr. Little. <laughs> and I, I could not see him at all. I just couldn't recognize his voice. I can't see out there. So yeah, and air conditioning. So it's just informational. We want everybody to know what what the plans are. Um, so with that, uh, we have a play coming up here with our 7th and 8th graders. It's, it's about theater. So I have a few jokes for you about the theater. So um, the owner of a theater dies. His visitations are 1 p.m., 3 p.m., 6.30, 9.30, and midnight. OK, there you go. That's it. Yeah, that one died. So this is not my joke, this is not about a theater, but I'm going to do it because an eighth grader told me to do it. Where do dads keep their dad jokes? In a database. Yeah, that was not mine, so you can blame Josh Brown for that. And then finally, uh, in, the first, uh, in the first show, we did thank Mr. Whitty because he does do a lot um, for setting up all this um, up here and all the, the decorations and things like that. And I just want to assure all the families in there, uh, out here today, uh, that if, you're, if, one of the, if one of your children falls through the floor, it's not a big deal. It's just a stage they're going through. So. All right. So, the 7th and 8th grade at Riverview Lutheran School proudly present the After Games. In the not too distant future, in a world where everyone is starving for attention, a place where each citizen desperately craves fame. Once in this dystopian society, everyone wanted to be in the spotlight. Everyone wanted to be the star. Humanity's obsession with all things drama became so distracting that people left their jobs, their homes, and their families just to audition for a bit part. In order to curb this mayhem, the Capitol put a stop to all auditions. The leader of the Capitol, a tyrannical dictator known as the great casting director, divided the population into 10 different districts, each one based upon the acting styles of the citizens. Greek tragedy. May Zeus look down upon you and smile. Shakespearean drama. Good morrow to thee, kind sirs and gentlewomen. Commedia dell'arte. <laughs> Melodrama. Good day. Or is it? <laughs> Silent film. <laughs> Musical. Avant-garde. I am a cactus. We are all cacti. Just a simple greeting is all we need. You are a cantaloupe. Thank you. Now stand back over there. Next up, Hollywood. Hi there. And finally, Method. Uh, method? Hello? Hello! Is that what you want me to say? Hello! There, I said it! Are you happy now? As you can tell, it's a wide assortment. <laughs> Once a year, the casting call takes place. One hopeful actor from each district is chosen. 
They are brought together to a place called the stage. It is there that an intense competition takes place. We call this terrifying event the Actor Games. Because only one person can win, there are many losers, each of whom suffers a terrible fate. But for the one victor who remains on stage, there is fame, fortune, and a long life in the most wonderful place in all the world, the theater. one. In all the years of the actor games, this district has never won. It is known as the land of middle school drama, and that is where our story begins. Rise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon. Sister, what are you doing? Where did you get that book? You should not have it. It does not belong to our district. Mary, you will get in trouble. I've told you before, twerp. I'm changing my name to Meryl. But Meryl, only the Hollywood people change their name, and only the Shakespeare people read that play. Well, I'm trying new things. During the last 75 years, no one from our district has ever won the after games. That is because we are bad actors. We will never win. And don't you want that to change? <laughs> yes, I most certainly do. Good, then don't tell mom. I'm gonna learn all about the other districts, just in case I make callbacks. everyone. Happy, Happy After Games! Oh, don't look so glum, good citizens. I know we have not had a champion from this district in the history of the games, but maybe this year we'll finally nail the audition. And now, let the casting begin. The family's last name is never seen. Congratulations, Never Seen Family, but only one of you can participate in the games. Here are your minds. Now, let the cold reading begin. You first. Toy boat, toy boat, toy boat. Very nice. Now you. Unique New York. Unique New York. Unique New York. <laughs> nice try. Your turn. One smart man. He felt smart. Two smart men. This is a bit immature, don't you think? Just read the card. <laughs> Two smart men. What's my motivation in this scene? Thank you. The casting is complete. <laughs> and now, it's time to find out who our nominee for the 75th Actor Games is. Mary Neverseen? Yes. You did not make callbacks. Mother never seen? 
looks worried, you do not make all that. <laughs> Finally, that means our nominee for the 75th After Games is Posey Never Seen. Wow, I won something. Maybe the After Games aren't so bad after all. I volunteer as tribute. Uh, sorry, it doesn't work that way. I don't want to lose you. Hug so tightly. Wall sister. Wall sister. God, it was one of us. Thanks. I'll try to make you, uh, line proud. Proud. And now, Miss Neverseen, it's time for you to prepare. You will make us proud. Speak out. Walk tall. Shut up. Oh, and break a leg. <laughs> Ow, my leg. What? Did you do? My poor daughter, Bryce is off stage! <laughs> well, as the family understudy, that means you're our nominee for the 75th Actor Games. You like me. You really like me. <laughs> Congratulations, Mary. Oh, I go by Meryl now. Meryl? Pretty fancy for someone who comes from the land of middle school drama. Look, I see your fellow competitors moving into position. Time for you to take your place with the others. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the thespians of the 75th Annual Actor Games. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> okay. Now, here are the rules. Each of you will go through a series of grueling drama activities. If the casting director approves of your performance, you move to the next round. If not, then it will be death. The death of your career and your fate will be decided by the fallback wheel. Are you ready to begin? Good, may the Oscars be ever in your favor. The props placed on the table are for the commercial room. For your first challenge, I will count down. Three, two, one, go. On the word go, you will rush to the product of your choice and deliver an impromptu commercial. The countdown is about to begin. Stand by. Stand by me. Walk the stage. Uh, the contestant from the musical district? You should know that there is no talking during the countdown. Now, let the countdown begin. Three. Three, four, and a fountain. Uh, no, I don't think you understand. I wasn't talking. I was singing. No singing. We'll start again. disqualified. Very well. Three, two, one. That's it. You just bombed on stage. Spin the fallback wheel. Let's see where you'll be spending the rest of your days. No, please. Uh, Aha, the wheel has landed on the number red. That means you spend the next 50 years working in dinner theater. As the cook. No! <laughs> now that we know just how high the stakes are, we can try again. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> Around. The tragic melancholy of ancient Greece versus the comedic mayhem of Renaissance Italy. Two classic forms indeed. But can they handle a modern commercial? Let's see. Father, alas, the gods have cursed me. Come here and drink some water. Tell me what is wrong, your daughter. Hades, wicked lord of the underworld, has fled my beautiful skin with acne. Do now fear the cure simple. With Monte Queen, I'll cure your pimple. No, it is too late for the good father. I never should have boasted to Aphrodite. Now I am to assure.
shame to attend the festival of prom. It feels like Mount Vesuvius is on the middle of my forehead, and it's about to erupt. Soon the zit will disappear with Moxie Clean out there right here. Oh, the Moxie Clean, it burns, it burns. Although it may make you scream, Moxie Clean works like a dream. <laughs> and scene. Let's give them a round of applause. turn things over to melodrama, the prominent acting style of the 19th century, the age of dauntless heroes, double crosses, and damsels in distress. And I see that she is paired up with our thespian from the age of silent film movies. Come into our kitchen, dear farmer husband. Where have you been all of this time? You have been working on the tractor. <laughs> well, after such a long day, you must be hot. And tired. And thirsty. Well, dear husband, try a glass of this new beverage called shellac iced tea. <laughs> Quite refreshing, don't you think? And yet, you've never tasted anything like it. That's because there's a special ingredient. And do you know what that is? It might be poison. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed, shellac iced tea might have a bit of poison for those special occasions when you find out that your husband has betrayed you. How? How have you betrayed me? Why, you might be having a secret romance with the title card girl. <laughs> <laughs> so that may be why you're beginning to feel your throat clenched and your knees wobble. Because I have poisoned you the way you have poisoned this marriage, the way you have poisoned my soul. Yes, dear husband, you might be dying. because the real special ingredient in shellac iced tea is a hint of lemon. Shellac iced tea, completely refreshing. <laughs> or is it? <laughs> thank you, thank you. And now, from the age of Shakespeare to the age of Stanislavski, this next commercial combined should have something for everyone. What's he that wishes for another toothpaste? No, fair cause, if we are marked with bad breath, we need not look elsewhere but in our medicine cabinets. But if to brush with presto gel, why the greater minty freshness shall be upon thy tongue. This toothpaste is called the gel of presto. He who has halitosis shall each morn brush his ivory fangs with presto gel and rancid no more shall be his breath. <laughs> he who has been plagued with black and gingivitis shall each evening brush and floss using presto gel, and his breath shall never be so vile. From this day until the ending of the world, your mitty breath shall be remembered, and so shall all of you who brushed with us with extra strength. Presto gel, huzzah! <laughs> Commercials. commercials are just corporate schemes designed to squeeze all of the creativity out of an artist, just like I'm squeezing this tube of toothpaste onto the brush. The theater shouldn't be about selling products, or dressing up in fancy costumes, or speaking in iambic pentameter. The theater should show us the truth, reality, everyday life, something as simple and as pure as a man brushing his teeth right on stage making himself look like a rabid dog, because that's what this world turns us into. I say, this presto gel is minty. How's my breath? <laughs> well done. Take a bow. I don't know. This 
This next commercial combines the surrealist style of avant-garde theater with the glamour of Hollywood. Hi there. I'm not a scientist, but I play one on television. Maybe you've seen me. Oh, of course you have. Being a scientist on TV is just as good as being a real one. Maybe even gooder. Because I get to tell the rest of the world about this amazing, new, scientific discovery. It's called a slinky. According to our research, a slinky can walk downstairs alone or in pairs. <laughs> and listen up, America. It makes a slinkity sound. My lovely assistant here will be showing us how a slinky truly works. Meow. Meow. Um, it's not a cat. Woo. Woo. It's not an owl either. It's a child's toy. You're a child's toy. Let's play. <laughs> All right. I think we've seen enough. I don't have anyone to act with. The stage is all yours, Mara. Oh, wow. It's bright out here. Do I just start? Hello? Am I going already? Uh, uh, oh boy. Um, hi, everyone. Are you tired of doing housework? Mopping the kitchen floor all by yourself? With no one to talk to? No one to know that you want more than a life? of waking up, going to work, coming home, doing chores, growing old, and dying? Do you feel all alone? I know just how you feel, Meryl. <laughs> you do? Why, sure I do. I get tired of these humans mopping my head across the kitchen floor all day long. I wish I had someone to talk to. Well, that's why we invented the Talking Mop 3000. It's more than a mop, it's a friend. Right, Moppy? Ah, oh, Meryl, I feel the same way. Order your Talking Mop 3000 today. <laughs> well, that was pretty good. Good? It was awesome! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I have the results from the great casting director. As good as you all did, I'm sorry to say that one of you must now be eliminated. And that losing actor is from... The Greek District. Oh, whoa, Tom, whoa. Who is more wretched than I? Why would you punish me this way? Maybe because you did a horrible job selling acne cream. Oh, and you also mentioned Mount Vesuvius, and that's from ancient Rome, not ancient Greece. Yes, we noticed those details. And now, let's spin the fallback wheel and discover your fate. Number... 8,652. And according to the chart, that represents rock and roll. Am I to join a rock and roll band? No. You'll spend the rest of your days pushing a rock up a hill and watching it roll back down. No! And Joel, time to clear the stage. You actors get 30 seconds before your next challenge. Drama games to continue. 
Now, pair yourselves up with another actor. For this next challenge, all you need to do is make your opponent laugh in the next 60 seconds. Beginning now. Knock, knock. Come in. funny pose or giggle as I wiggle my nose? No. Wouldn't you rather laugh at the absurdity of the universe? What you're just home with? I can never cope. I'd rather spend time with the Mrs. Rose. So what? You call that funny? You messed up. We have our first laughter. Well, I wasn't laughing with him. I was laughing at him. <coughs> See, anyone can call a hat around like that. Watch. to me. You are eliminated. Here is your fallback number. Oh no. 
not this one. Our silent film star friend is doomed to become. Oh, it's too painful for me to say out loud. Say it, say it. Doomed to become a drama teacher. <laughs> Don't worry, kid. It's not so bad. <clears throat> Whoever you are, I've always depended on the kindness of strangers. <laughs> now, where was I? Uh, no, you had your chance. Time for a true tragedian to take the stage. The year is 1898. Paris, the middle of winter. I am Madame Moiselle, an exquisitely beautiful woman who is married to a handsome yet opinionated husband. A husband. Yeah, babe? <laughs> My life is so dreary. I deserve to be wealthy, yet here I am in this pathetically middle-class house with nothing to do on a Saturday night. Cheer up, babe. My boss has invited us to his party. It's just what you've been waiting for. Isn't it wonderful? It's terrible. I have nothing to wear. Your new dress is wonderful. <sighs> Don't make me wretch. I need something to wear with it. How about some flowers? <sighs> I need jewelry. Well, maybe that rich friend of yours could lend you some. Oh, rich friends! May I borrow some jewelry? Does this necklace work? Oh, it's perfect. Isn't this a lovely party? Oh, do shut up and dance with me. Great acting challenge. I am for you. 
Icebergs ready. Music, please. Even though I'm crazy and surrounded by hundreds of popsicle people, and I'm both think for some reason. Iceberg! Whatever it is, I just want to say that I'm thankful, Rose. I'm thankful. You poor thing. You're shivering. Come sit up here. No, I want you to be safe. There's tons of room on this thing. <laughs> no, that's not how I'm supposed to Come on, little guy. Up here. Oh, I like it. <laughs> there we are. Oh, warm and toasty. Would you like a necklace? The diamonds are real. Hey. <laughs> Once again, thou art soiling another tragic scene. Haven't you ever seen the movie? I told you. No! I think she should be eliminated. Yes. That's not up to you. Uh, I'm still in ocean here, people. All right, you want a tragedy? How about a revenge tragedy? What are you doing? Making an end of you. Your time does not belong on this stage. Cry, have it, and let slip the dogs will howl. Are you okay? My horizons, be all my sins are in the future. Give them to me. We can fix them, right, can't we? I could 
do any one of those death scenes on the board. Then why don't you? Maybe I will. <laughs> oh ye gods of Olympus, I have stolen the torch from the goddess Hera, crashed the sun chariot from the god Apollo, and plucked the beard of the almighty Zeus. What are you going to do about it? Lightning bolt! The Two bolt points. the bolt of electricity transports me to the age of Shakespeare, where an angry waiter exacts his revenge. Revenge! Oh! <laughs> Out, brief candle. Five points. Struck by lightning, stabbed by a sword. She stumbles onto a deadly banana peel. Bonus point. She felt bombarded by the weight of the world. <laughs> she was. Oh. <laughs> How symbolic. Ooh, an avant-garde death scene. You've got eight points now. Crushed by the continents. She sought solace in the only place she knew, the sea.
great. Thanks so much. Let's give these kids one more big round of applause.
teachers for quite a long time. <laughs> um, I feel very blessed that I've been able to be on this stage and be with them and grow in this Christian school. And I want to give another round of applause to both of them because they are truly amazing. <laughs> So amazing. Uh, we have some flowers for each of them. Um, just to remind them how much they mean to um, all of us. Yes, thank you everyone for coming. Um, everyone who helped put this show together. Uh, it was a ton of fun. One more moment here, and then they'll take their microphones off, their costumes off, and then they can head to Culver's because we'll be striking the set at, at our cast party on Monday here, okay? So you can take some pictures, and thanks again, everybody, for coming very much.